Hi everyone, it's great to be back online with you today for our daily devotions. In these uncertain times, it's so important that we stay rooted in the truth of God's word. Everything changes whenever we hear God for ourselves. And to encourage you as you read God's word for yourself, we are using the SOAP model for studying God's word. S stands for scripture. We start by reading God's word for ourselves. O stands for observation. What lessons can we learn from the scripture we've just read? A is for application. How can we apply these lessons to our everyday lives? And P is for prayer. Recently, I found myself thinking a lot about waiting. Who hates waiting? Waiting for the traffic lights to turn green. Waiting for the water to boil for that first cup of coffee in the morning. Or maybe it's waiting for your husband or wife to get ready when you want to go out. If Mark was here, he would say a loud yes to that one. Many of us hate waiting. We often see waiting as frustrating and pointless. And yet the reality is today, many of us are waiting. Waiting for God to do something. We believe that he's able. Maybe we've even seen God do it for other people, but he hasn't yet answered our prayer. We're in the waiting. And I don't know what you're waiting for. It might be a financial breakthrough, a job, your health, a miracle in a relationship. Perhaps you're waiting for a child to come back to the Lord. For many years, Mark and I found ourselves waiting, waiting for the blessing of having our own children. Waiting is so hard. And the reality is that at some point in our lives, we face waiting seasons. Today, we're going to look at Psalm 27. And in this Psalm, King David talks about waiting on God. In this psalm, we see that for David, life has had its ups and downs, good times and difficult times, much like most of us. He was facing a situation where people had lied about him and his enemies were coming against him. And then in verses 13 and 14, David says this, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. David knew that waiting on God wasn't an easy thing to do. In these verses, David says that he could have lost heart. And perhaps today, you find yourself in the place of waiting and you're ready to lose heart. I want to encourage you today, don't give up. Don't lose heart. You see, delays with God don't necessarily mean denials. And with God, a waiting season is never a wasted season. Waiting on God isn't passive. It requires a trust a trust in God, believing that his ways are perfect towards us. It's actually in the waiting that we learn to trust God, that the plans that he has for us, they're for good, they're not for evil, they're to give us a hope and an expected end. Waiting requires great patience, but patience produces something. And James 1 verses 3 and 4 says this, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. As we wait and God is doing a work in us, a godly woman once told me this, the waiting room is God's most productive workroom. So looking at Psalm 27, what lessons can we learn in the waiting? Firstly, in the waiting, we need to remain faith-filled. 
In this psalm, the Hebrew word for waiting is kaba, which means to look for, to hope, and to expect. In verse 13, David said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed. What did David believe? He believed that he would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And often in the waiting, we don't see what we want to see, but we have to trust God. David doesn't focus on his circumstance, that he's in danger of being killed by his enemies. He focused on God, that God is good and that God does good. It's in the waiting that God is teaching you and I to walk by faith and not by sight. Real faith isn't about what we see or feel. It's about God, who he is, what he's done and what he's promised you. And I in this in his word. And Isaiah 64, 4 promises this, that God acts for the one who waits for him. So even when we don't see it or feel it, in the waiting, God is at work. He's acting on our behalf. Secondly, in the waiting, we need to be of good courage. That phrase, good courage, it reminds me of what God said to Joshua in Joshua chapter one. He told Joshua to be strong and of good courage several times in that chapter because he knew that Joshua was going in to possess the promised land and that he would have to fight many battles. But you see, sometimes it takes as much courage to wait on God as it does to fight the battles in his name. And as we wait for God to move in our situation, it's so easy to let fear, to let worry, to let doubt into our lives. And we need to be of good courage. Living courageously doesn't mean that we don't experience fear. It means that we act in spite of it, knowing that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. God is greater than any fear that you and I experience. Isaiah 41 10 says this, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. In the waiting, God is helping, upholding and strengthening you and I today. The enemy wants to discourage us as we wait, but we need to keep pressing into God, knowing that he is sovereign, that his timing is perfect, that his will is perfect. It's in the waiting we surrender our ways to God's ways. It's in the waiting that you and I learn to trust God, that the plans he has for us, they're for good, they're not for evil, to give us a hope and an expected end. The scripture we've been looking at today is Psalm 27, verse 14. And in the Passion Translation, it says this. It's David speaking. Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. So as we apply the truths of Psalm 27 verses 13 and 14 to our lives. Let's be faith-filled in the waiting. So how do we practically move from a place of doubt and fear in the waiting to being in a place of being faith-filled? The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today, I want to encourage you to write out your declaration of faith for what you find yourself waiting for. It could include promises from God's word for your situation and begin to speak out that declaration of faith. Take time today with God in prayer to pray through what you are waiting for and in the waiting, surrender to his will to be done in your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are a good father. 
Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us in the time of waiting. Father, we surrender our will to your will today, Father. Give us the courage and the strength to trust that your ways are perfect, that your timing is perfect, and your will for our lives is perfect. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.